Hello, this is a training on how to do content bundles in Digital Rebar. We're using version 3.7 for this demo. I have Greg Althaus with me. Hi. And uh, our assumption for this video is that you've already created templates, uh, tasks, stages, all the things that Digital Rebar needs. Uh, there's another video that shows you how to do that. This one shows you how to take all that and send it up to the system uh, in a systematic way that we call bundling. And We've already got uh, this color demo uh, system put together. Watch the other video to see how and why we build all the, these pieces and parts. Um, we've even gone through and created uh, some version information, name. So we have all these, all the bits and pieces that you would expect mm -hmm. out um, in, this, in this thing called color demo. But it's not in the system. Okay. That's right. So, um, oh, and. Um, here's the portal. I'm going to log into the portal. We've got one machine in it for testing. So here's my machine. It's just in Sledgehammer Wait, which is a good staging environment. Um, and so let's go ahead from there and take the next steps for actually packaging up okay. all that content. <clears throat> so we've built our content bundle. It's going to do what we've kind of wanted it to do, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And we've laid it out in the form of a directory storage a content store that our system provides. And so the, the next thing we need to do is to build that into a bundle that we're gonna be able to inject and manage. The idea is that I'm using this directory to store all the objects that I want for DRP. Oh. <laughs> and so the it's a white out. So yes, yeah. fog bank rolls <laughs> through. Bank rolls through. <laughs> the the objects represents the things I need. Like Rob was saying, stages, tasks, all that stuff. Yeah, and we'll build those in, a, in a, another video. Yeah, later. but the point is, it represents a task or a thing I want to do to the machines. So I could use this directory format, save it, store it, use Git, for example, to manage versions, all that kind of stuff. So rather than a template at a time or a task at a time, this right. is a collection, like a GitHub repo that has, here's a whole bunch of stuff I have, I collect together. And, and I can I manage its version and all that stuff. Mm. And then I want to upload that all as one unit. And that's our content bundles. So DRP CLI provides us a happy tool uh, in the contents Oh, contents, piece, right. So we're talking about contents. Um, for bundle. Mm. So you can take a bundle. You can unbundle. Yeah, oh, you can even okay. unbundle too. But That's pretty cool. So we're going to bundle, and we need to give it a file name, which okay. is going to be the color, output this file. Color demos, the stuff we're doing. Yeah. Okay. You got to give it a file name. Oh, I do. oh yeah, okay. That makes sense. YAML. And there you go. So. That didn't seem to. All right. Well, let's, so let's see what that file looks like. So the. the uh, here we go. There's a the new dot, file. It needs to have .yaml or .json so it knows what format to put the bundle in. Uh -huh. So in this case, um, you so have... So all this stuff came from when we built name and... That's right. We pulled in the files. And then you can see in there we also pull in the parameters we wanted, the stages we wanted, the tasks, and the templates, right? We'll talk about that in another video. So, But anyway, now we have our bundle. Awesome. Bundle's available. We have it versioned. So at this point, we want to create... So if the content doesn't exist, we'll have to create it. You can say create this content, that's and it. that's it. So Ooh. there we go. Now it ran. Now notice there are some warnings. You oh, that's scary. A lot, it out a lot of warnings. Those warnings, what happens is when we inject content bundles into the system, we do a whole object test to see if objects are still valid. These are the warnings that are on some of the existing objects. You'll notice most of them are actually um, boot -ams, ISOs. boot -ams and ISOs uh, that aren't available. So this is so. related to things like our boot -ams. Some of We have boot environments in the system that never got operating systems. Correct. Like okay. And so that's what's, those are the warnings that are continuing in the full object set. The content loaded. So <gasps> Yay, there's yeah, my thing. There it Version is. one, that looks good. Right. And so that then brings in a whole bunch of... That brought in our stages and our tasks and those other things. So at this point we want to test it, right? So since the color demo is trying to is color demo? programmatically let you change the icon and color right, so of a machine in the So normally in tables. machines, I can come in here, I can manually set the color. 
So I could set, uh, let's see, yellow. Uh, we can do, let's do red, makes it easy to find. And we want to set the icon, we'll do the settings icon for this. I want to make it red. red. Yeah, it yeah. does care. Red isn't necessarily a color. Right. All right, so see now, all okay, right, so there's that. Yay, That's great. Right there. So now we want to test it because we're going to use our bundle. Um, let's get rid of the Greg profile off of that Oops. one. Yep. We'll clean up what I forgot to do. There we go. There we go. So now we're in the sledgehammer way. Sledgehammer way is a, kind of our intermediate done state for our discovery process. We've left the runner running and it's just waiting in sledgehammer. So and I want to make sure we. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so I've been playing, so I'm going to remove the parameter. We'll put that back in a minute. Okay. okay. So we're going to test our bundle. Our bundle had some default actions that would work without any parameters set. So we're going to test that right. first. So we set it to a black icon that looked like a server. Server, right. right. That's our goal. So sense. now we want to run that stage. When the stage changes, the Color system demo right here. Yeah, the system should run the task. So we'll so run it. Sledgehammer is actually just waiting for a new instruction. Right. Okay. okay. Hit that. Go. And color demo is running. Uh, maybe refresh and see if it's set. No. All right. Something nope. Something didn't work right. Let's see what happens in jobs. 71. That's short. It did not actually run the runner. Hmm. Oh, I know what the problem is. Okay. Um, our tokens have timed out. Ah. I that mean. makes sense because, right, this machine's been going for a little while. So one of the things about the runner is it does have a limited time window token. So let's see if I can just reboot the machine here. Yeah, we'll need to reboot. Uh, quickly, before you get too far, change its stage to discover. Oh, good idea. Stage to discover. Uh, force. And force it. Okay, so okay. now we should see it come back up. And so what you don't see behind the scenes is my little, now you can change the, the um, leases so that they take longer to run and you wouldn't have this problem. You could have systems that could run a long time. By default, for security reasons, the leases are pretty short. So you can't have a machine running around somewhere. And, and you can see we're doing a whole bunch of work on it. And if you watch behind the scenes, it said sledgehammer wait as we took the system back into its state. Yeah, now so. we can take the action that you wanted to take, turn off forcing. Yeah. Stages, color demo, go. And there we go. So in this case, it already is super fast because it's pull driven and it's already set the icon into it. And if I go into the machine itself and hide the event viewer, you'll see the meta, there's the metadata. If I edit it, I can see the, the details back. Here's the, the black. Uh, so I'd say set it to, set set it it to purple. 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 And here we go. All right. All right. So now we want to test actually setting a parameter on it. So uh, making sure our content works that way. So why don't we go and back into the machine. Okay. And we will edit. And let's change the icon to. So this case, we have a couple of parameters in here. I actually, we need to add the, change the icon. Okay. Let's do the color. Color, I think, color. from this one. Yeah, we'll do color. So let's make it red. So add that icon and say red over here. Cool. And then let's set the server icon to the spy or something. Oh, just change this from server yeah. to spy. All right. So that way we'll see, you know, make sure everything changes. Because what we should expect now is because we had default content, we'd expect the spy to change back to a server, but because we overrode the color, it should be red. Right. So in this in this task, we set. We, we have a default it black and server. We're only overriding the color. Right, right. so we should get back server. So, so one other thing to note, you can't just rerun a stage if it's already in the stage. Right. So you need to be in a stage to move to. Sledgehammer waits a good one, there's no task, it puts it back to a waiting state, and then we can run color demo again. Hey, look, look. red server, red everything's server. Good. good. Everything's good, all right. That looks good. awesome, so I can come back over to jobs. In jobs, I can come back here and say, okay, look, here's my set the oh, color red, right. icon server, and then a whole bunch of data. 
Right. So uh, here's the job, and it ran, right? We can see the red, we can see all this stuff. I, I don't need all this. I want to change this, right? I don't, I don't like all the text. This is the standard. So we'd update a machine, we get the full machine object back. Yeah. Um, so let's go into, in, in this, we'll, we'll talk about this another, in the, in the prep demo, uh, in the prep video, but there's a template in here with the script. And if I wanted to actually fix that part of it, it's not HTML, I'm going to get in trouble if I say this is the wrong thing. It's actually a shell script. And if I pipe this to jq, jq um, dot meta, mm -hmm. I should just get back the meta. Yeah, so the this meta is just structure. running that CLI command. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so basically, we're updating the template that's running the, the script that we're actually setting things with. All right. So now I'm ready to upload this and send it back up. Right. But we got to rebundle it. Oh, right. And right, what right. we probably want to do is change the version so that we know we changed something. That makes sense. It's good so, code yeah. control. Okay. So let's update version by doing echo version. Okay. So this is your, your cheesy. I have one in my, my history, so I'll just go back up to mm -hmm. that. Here's echo version. And let's change it to something else, right? Okay. okay. So dot two, right? Yep. So it's an incremental version. Yeah. So we got that. So now we need to rebundle it. So we'll just run that bundle command. Yeah. There's bundle again. again. That's pretty what straightforward. And so and now, now I'm ready to. No, we don't create. Oh. We need, it's already created. So we need to update uh, it. So in this case, we want to update. And we say, and we have to give it the name so it knows what to update. Okay. There you go. And so, right, if I had called this color demo of dot v002, yeah, then I, I could have multiple file. files. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. That, that worked. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's make sure it's, it's updated. And I can go to content packages over here. There it is. There it is. And uh, we took a, a little break, so I'm going to actually need to reset this machine. So I'll let Just it reboot. reboot it, yeah, but. Before we t start testing but it again. Set the stage, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. All right, set stage. Back to discover. Mm -hmm. Set the stage. Just make sure we get through all the process. Power, recycle. Cycle. Yeah. Good. All right, so the machine's resetting. Now I can check while that reboots and my machine gets a little busy. Um, you can see it doing all these things in the background. Uh, here's color demo. Ah, version two. That's pretty cool. Oh, uh, so that's all set, and I could actually look at my template over here and see my um, color demo template. And oh, look, it changed it. Yep. when I came in. One thing to note here is that everything that comes in through a bun uh, content package is read only. So I can't change it in the UX. It's going to be changed in the system. Uh, by doing a new upload. So that's how we ensure that when you push new content, that content is coming in as part of the bundle. And it's actually layered. We have a layered uh, management system. So those things are, are isolated in, in really careful ways. Yeah. Um, all right, so right. now we're back. Uh, we right, we had done, we had set this, but I wanted to also show how to do it with a profile. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, let's go ahead into profiles. And I'm going to, we, we did this once before with the Greg profile, but I'm going to do it with the Rob profile. It takes yeah, a little ownership true, yeah, yeah. and of pride here. And so um, we're going to change not the color, because we set yeah. that on the machine. We're going to change the icon. That's right. So yeah. I need to add that into the profile. And then um, uh, let's see, I'll use the rocket. Rocket's a good one. Um, and so I can actually set the, my own profile. So this one, I'm going to say rocket. Let's see. Oops. Let's make this rocket the right one. It should be down in this list. The rocket. There we go. And I'll make this uh, gray. Green. Um. Let's do green. Okay. So I've added a profile here for Rob with the green rocket. And its only value in here, I didn't hit the parameters correctly, so let me see, I must have messed up. Uh, so yeah, I you check. I, I did not hit, no, no, no. I did not do this correctly. Just the top. Oh, at the top. Right, color icon, mm -hmm. add, rocket. Rocket, rocket. Whew. Thank you, save. I see, make sure I made it this time. Yay, yeah, yeah, okay. now it's in there. And notice this is the icon for the color demo icon that we set in the in the parameter when we built it. 
All right, so now if I go back into my machine, and I'm going to go and, and reset its icon. Uh, let's see, actually, I'm going to show you even a little bit deeper. Um, because in my history, I actually wipe out the icon altogether. So this is a DRP machines update, mm -hmm. meta, color nothing, icon nothing, all the way back. Live update, icon's gone mm -hmm. from the machine. So now, I have a machine, its parameter says make the icon red. Mm -hmm. Its profile would say make the icon into a rocket, but I haven't set a profile That's yet, right. so I have to set, set profile. profile to Rob. Just a coincidence here that I've used, I'm using rocket in both cases. Um, cool. What would happen if I, Greg is a different icon, I'd have two, I'd have a conflict. Well, it goes by order of the profiles on the machine. So it'll hmm. find, okay. it'll walk through, it'll look in the machine, then it'll look in the first profile, next profile, next file, and then eventually global. Cool. So, so it's order dependent. So, so depending on how you put them on, you would get different results. Got it. So now, if now I'm in Sledgehammer Wait, so I can go ahead and do my stage, color demo, hit it, red. it's already run, and it's Red, red Rocket, rocket. woohoo! So, uh, oh, so go check out your job to see if your, oh, yeah. your change actually works. So here's my job, over here, color demo, yeah. and Much oh, look shorter. at this, nice so now I can see yeah. exactly the change that I had. This type of little little touch in here is handy if you're writing a big set of scripts. You could actually use um, stages or icon color changes as sort of debugging tips to make sure you're going. We the the whole icon um, system that we have today was based on um, a little historical tidbit for people. These these colors and icons were really important when we added stages because machines advanced through stages really quickly. And so we wanted to be able to track where our machines were in their workflows. And so the stages became a very easy way for you to look at a machine and figure out where it was in its life cycle. Um, the, the, the bulk edit actually puts the icons in here. We should do the same thing on the machines view. And then in overview, as things change stages, you actually get live updates here as they go through that, that stage process. So some handy tidbits um, about how these things are operating. One thing that uh, will, is in the other video but is worth showing is when you're looking at templates there's all sorts of substitution parameters that let you pull information from the machine. Uh, we'll cover that more in the other video. Uh, any final parting words of advice? No. Nope. Uh, I do have one more thing to show people. Uh, so if I remove color demo it will also take out all of the related components. So color demo is no longer a stage there's no longer parameters for it. Now, the profiles will still still be there. They will be, but they'll be invalid now. Uh, uh, no, they won't. The machine will be, though. Right, so our, our color change profile is gone, and then um, this color change icon is now actually an ad hoc icon. That's right, and the machine is probably invalid as well at this point because it was in the color demo stage, and so if we look at it, it'll tell you it's missing a stage. So. Uh, system does the right thing when you yank out the carpet from under it. Um, it doesn't fall over, but it's going to tell you, hey, there's, there's some problems here, mm -hmm. uh, and you should be aware of it. And I could just update, the, put the stage back in, and things would be healthy. Things would be again. fine, or you go force the machine into a new stage that exists, and it'll be fine again as well. So a nice little bonus to show you both the insertion and the removal. Yeah, content. and yes. Excellent. Well, I hope this was helpful. Um, when you're ready to go, start creating content. This is your resource. Thanks. Thanks.